Hi guys, hello, how are you doing? Um, I really hope this presentation finds you and every single person you care about all doing well. Um, my name is Tamara Gonzalez and thank you for being interested in this presentation. Uh, I'm here to invite you to come with us to Isla de Mona to see all the caving and all the exploration we have been doing for the, pa for the past few years. I'm going to share my screen before I go on. There it is for us all to be able to see the presentation. And well, I am a Puerto Rican caver and since 2016 I have been part of this bunch of people that go continuously and every year to Mona to explore all the caves. And that is basically the Isla de Mona project. And we have been concentrating ourselves um, in that north cliff you see just right over there. Uh, Isla de Mona, like I said, is a, it's a group it's a work group that, that since 1998 have been going continuously and systematically to Isla de Mona to explore the entire island finding caves. Um, whether they are in the North Cliff, South Cliff, in the center, in the certain of the island, it doesn't matter. We, we try to locate those caves and to survey those caves. Um, the project is coordinated by caver Patricia Cambises in collaboration with Puerto Rican cavers and cavers from the U.S. And it's pretty interesting because when they started way back in 1998, they thought they were going to find around 30 or 40 caves in Olmona. But by now, in, um, in 2020, they have more than 240 caves documented and uh, around 237 of those caves have a map already completed. Um, the work we have been doing there is in collaboration with the Department of Natural Resources of Puerto Rico and all the maps that we end up doing help them for the conservational purposes that they might have in the future uh, within the cave of Isla de Mona. Also, um, the, the maps that we, that, we, that we produce help any future scientific or academical studies that might go on in the future in any cave of Mona, since they have a, a map from, the, from where they can part on working. And something we have to really mention now before we go all into, into the North Cliff of Mona is that the notion of exploring Isla de Mona is not that you, might, you are going to find at the end a pristine cave or a cave that no human being ha has ever stepped on it. Uh, caves in Mona are, are well documented, having a human presence inside of them. Uh, the notion of exploration we are going to be seeing here is more trying to locate caves, to locate a cave that probably has some type of human presence, that, but that we have to find so we can uh, explore it and create basically a map. But where is Isla de Mona? Well, Isla de Mona is part of the archipelago of Puerto Rico. It belongs to Puerto Rico and is situated between the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico main island and is, is an island part of the Mona Passage and as you can see there Mona is just in the middle of the Mona Passage between those two main main big islands. Um, basically Mona the entire island is a, is a big plateau that emerged from the ocean and it has a cliff all around the island. It's just that the cliff you're going to find in the north, the east, and the west side of Isla de Mona, it ends up, it ends directly in the ocean. Uh, or to the contrary, the, the cliff in the south and the southwest of Isla de Mona that ends in the coastal plain that produces many, many sandy beaches around the southwest and south um, part of the island. There you can see a typical Mona cliff that ends in the Atlantic Ocean. And in the bottom, you can see Playa Mujeres, which is a, a beach just there in the southwest of Isla de Mona, a sandy beach, like I, like I just mentioned. Um, the caves you can find there in Mona are definitely sea caves. Uh, they're sinkhole, they're shaft, they're pits, and they're flame margin caves. And something that we definitely have to mention now is that Mona distinguishes herself for being a good example of, uh, of having wonderful examples of flame margin caves. Um, basically, you can find in, in Mona many of those type of caves all around the island in the cliff and sometimes below the cliff. Um, Mona is also a natural reserve since 1986 and is under the management of the Department of Natural uh, Resources of Puerto Rico. Um, today, leisure tourism and scientific tourism 
is permitted in the island and only park rangers are stationed there the whole year. But the thing about human presence in Mona is that if you look into the literature, it has been established that since 5,000 years ago from today, you can really see the human presence in, in the caves in Mona and in Mona. And some people even are suggesting that it was precisely the cave of the caves of Mona that attracted that human presence in the beginning. Um, when you go there to Mona uh, to explore or probably maybe to have a good time with your friend, with your friends, you have to, you need to have in your mind that Mona is a remote island. There's no water inside the island for human consumption. You have to bring all your water supply for your stay, for you to drink and to cook your own food. Also, depending on where you are in, in Mona, um, temperatures can go up a lot. If you're in the, in the plateau, uh, in the cliff where we, are, where, where we have been caving and exploring the North Cliff, among some other cliff definitely, temperatures can rise probably more than 90 degrees Fahrenheit with 100% of humidity any day of the year. And you have to understand that and take that into consideration. Also, everything you're going to do in Mona has to be done by foot. Uh, there are a few trails in Isla de Mona, uh, particularly in the south part of Mona and also in the center of the island. And for us cavers, we definitely have to step out those those trails to go look for for, for the for the caves uh, we have to step out of those um, trails yes to go uh, to find the caves and the thing is where you establish your base camp is going to be vital for the experience you're going to have in Mona and what you are going to accomplish and that year and um, typically there are two base camps uh, there are two places in Mona where you can establish a camp there's one in Playa Pajaros in the southeast of Isla de Mona and there's another one in Playa Sardinera when Proyecto Isla de Mona started in 1998 they went there to Playa Pajaros to to survey all to explore and survey all the caves from that area around probably more than 10 years ago they moved to Playa Sardinera and they have been caving in the North Cliff and all in the west side of the island and also in the south uh, west of the island. The thing about Mona project is that right now we have some others some other efforts going going on there. It's just that this presentation is going to be only about the North Cliff exploration that has been done in the in, in a few years um, in a couple of years back. Um, for our purposes here, the North Cliff of Mona is between Barrio Nuevo Cape and the Northeast Cape. And in 2016, we concentrated ourselves there between Barrio Nuevo Cape and the Northwest Cape. And we explore and survey four caves. That will be Cueva Excalibur, Cueva Esperanza, Cueva Gato, and Cueva Agave. Um, there you can see one of the maps, the map that was done that year. That one is, uh, was done by Dave West, and that is Cueva, Cueva Esperanza. And all the caves that we did that, years, uh, that year, they were pretty close from our base camp, uh, between 1 and 1.5 miles um, to really pull that off, to, to, to explore and map four caves. Uh, we had to put into work all of the 10 members uh, of the expedition of that year, and we divided, we divided ourselves into three groups. Uh, there you can see a couple of us um, uh, cavers there uh, serving one of the caves, uh, another caver that's Tom walking around the, the plateau. But I really want you to focus for a moment on and, and the, and the picture you see there in the top left. That's a window from Cueva Esperanza. And that's basically part of the group that at uh, that time having lunch after, after, the, after the morning work. And if you take a closer look to the map, you see there on the left a bunch of entrances. That window there is one of those entrances. And Sometimes in Mona, the only way to get into a cave is by is is using one of those windows, which is in fact an entrance to a cave, and that is what happened with Cueva Excalibur. That that was one of the caves that we explored that year and we mapped, and um, it's like I said, really close from our from our base camp, just 1.5 miles from from Sardinera. It's just that the entrance of that cave. The, of, the, of, the, of the Excalibur cave has one particularity. You have 
to rappel down to it because the entrance is located a hundred feet below the edge of the cliff. Um, there, uh, there's, th there's a photo of the actual entrance of the cave. And what happened with, the, with, with Quebec Excalibur is that the preparation and the logistics to go inside that cave, they started way before 2016. Um, every year when we go back to Puerto Rico main island, we go around the Mona, the Isla de Mona, trying to locate entrances that are on the cliff that they might produce a cave. And they saw that huge entrance that you can see there. And, and that's an actual photo of the cave from the boat. And basically what we do is that we take it, we pinpoint the entrance from the sea and when and then we go to the Mona Plateau to try to identify uh, a best way, the best way or the best path to try to get into the cave. That year, and since we were walking in Cuevagato, we thought that from Cuevagato was going to be basically the best way uh, uh, and the best cave to rappel from to enter uh, to enter Cueva Excalibur. Um, that year, uh, that party was Rick, was Pat, was Tom, was Elizabeth, I was Mark John, Manuel and myself, we all went to Guevagato to try to establish two rigging points uh, and to rappel to the cave. Basically in the second intent um, it, it, we rappelled to the cave and we found it and it was really a huge experience to to be able to call them back by, by radio and tell them hey we just found the entrance. Uh, basically it was a huge team effort like i said it started way before 2016 and the more experienced cavers there in isla de mona they trusted us the the new ones and we ended up doing a very safe and nice rappel and the thing is that we we landed if you can take a closer look to the to the photograph of the cave there in the middle that's a collapse the rope miraculously <laughs> uh, went just there and that was our, 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 our point of entrance to the to the cave um, when we were inside well we just explored the cave and we served the cave and something that we immediately noticed was the human present and specifically in this cave is the guano mining evidence um, in Mona since the second half of the 19th century up until the first half of the 20th century, there was a guano mining industry going on there, which means that many, many caves in Mona are were, were exploded, were exploded for those purposes. And when you go inside of a cave, and Excalibur is an example, you see rails, you see tools, you see many letters, names, um, probably from the miners that were working inside of the cave, and literally sometimes you see how they destroy the cave, how they blew up the cave to really take away the rock that contained Wano because they were, it was their business, they were, they were doing that. And that is basically the human evidence that we found there. There's a couple of pictures of, of some of the members doing the survey uh, of the cave and it took us two days to complete, that, uh, to complete the, the map of the, of the Cueva Excalibur. We were very excited and we, we went back the next year in 2017 and before we go into that let me quick mention uh, some of the uh, cavers that were uh, in, in that exploration year. Uh, in the top uh, you see that photo there from the right you can see Elizabeth Winkler, that's Mark Jones, Michael Lace, that people's, that's Pipo Mejias also. But in the middle, you see there a man, <laughs> and that's Carmelo Agosto. Uh, Carmelo is a Puerto Rican caver. He is a U.S. veteran, and he is a person that has been in Mona many times. He has written about Mona a lot. Um, he has a good amount of experience in serving. He's been caving all around the Caribbean until. And he's a person you really want to have in your team. He has thousands of stories to share with you and with us um, when we are walking under that sun. And basically that was part of the team that was with us um, in 2007. But back to the map and the exploration, there you can see uh, quite a few caves. You see Cueva Espinal, you see Cueva Laberinto, you see Cueva Papaya, and what we think it might be a new cave. Um, in terms of access to those caves from Sardinera, they're not far away, really. But the thing is that it kept harder to advance in the trail. 
Um, there's a trail from Sardinera where we are camping all the way to the Northwest Cape. Uh, but after Barrio Nuevo Cape, it gets harder to, to find the trail. And after Cueva Espinal, there you see Cueva Espinal, and here is a map of that cave, it's even harder to advance in the North Cliff. We have been able to advance uh, there, but it's not that easy, it's complicated. Um, some quick mention um, about this cave. Um, this cave is an example of a North Cliff cave that has rock art, specifically Taino rock art inside of it. There you can see a couple of the, uh, of the pictures uh, of the, of the pict pictograph you can find inside that cave. And the map you see there of Cueva Espinal was done back in 2014 and is an example of a map that has a couple of participants that work in Isla de Mona in some other uh, project. They have their own archaeological pro uh, project going there and they are studying, among, among many other things, they are studying the, the Taino presence inside the cave and that map there, there is something that is going to help them definitely to accomplish that work. Uh, but back again to the map and the exploration. Um, that year in 2017, we made the whole, we explored and made the whole map of Cueva Labrinto. But, but while we were serving and exploring Cueva Papaya, and there in the top there's a photo of Pat um, serving Cueva Papaya, while we were serving that cave, we think we might have found a new cave. The thing is that Rick, Tom and Pat, and when we got into Cueva Papaya, they, they stayed in the cave in the entrance to start serving um, Cueva Papaya immediately. <clears throat> and Manuel and I, we were assigned to make, to make a small recognition of the cave before joining the survey team. The thing was that while we were exploring the cave, we saw a window. And if you are caving in the north cliff of Mona, and basically anywhere in the cliff in Mona, and you, got, you get into a cave and you see a window, you want to go out because sometimes it's easier for you to advance in the edge of the cliff instead of trying to, to walk in, in, the, in, the, in the trail because sometimes the trail, like I, I, I have been saying, is very difficult to trace. So when we spotted the, the window, the entrance, we immediately went out trying to head ourselves in the north cliff, heading, going to the east side of the island in north cliff spotting new windows, new entrances, uh, and that means that sometimes you have to rig a rope because you want to go to the edge and you want to do it safely to try to locate an entrance that is below the cliff, just like the one we saw previously with um, Cueva Excalibur. And while we were doing that, uh, advancing in the, in the cliff, in the edge of the cliff, we spotted an entrance uh, probably around 500 feet from the past, from the last window in Cueva Papaya, we we spotted a new a new entrance. We went there, we did a small recognition, and we went back to the group that was serving in Cueva Papaya to tell them that we we found a, a new entrance, and that it might lead to a new cave. We all went there, which is very nice because as we all went back to that unregistered cave, the other three cavers they were also trying to locate for entrances that we might have passed by. And um, basically we went to the, to the unregistered cave with a small recognition. We all went back to Cueva Papaya to keep doing the survey. And we think that this new cave is in fact another separate cave, an independent cave from Cueva Papaya. It's just that in 2017, we did not finish the map of Cueva Papaya, so only the conclusion of the map will for sure tell if it is an, in the, an independent cave. Um, we, we, we need to go back uh, to go to Cueva Papaya and to finish the, the, the map to be certain that it is a, an independent cave. There, there's also some caves in Mona that are really a big, huge learning experience. And there are some caves that it demonstrates how we as a group, we put all of our hearts into something and all of our will. And sometimes, well, you cannot uh, accomplish what you really want. And that's the example of Cova Rifle. Cova Rifle is a very well-known cave in Mona. It's a, it's a cave that, in the, it's a cave in the North Cliff that also have Taino rock art inside of it. Um, and it's a cave that probably back in 1998 when Preto Isla de Mona started, that's a very well-known cave. I mean, we all, I mean, 
the, the existence of Cueva Rifle has been known for quite some time. Probably they knew about the existence of the cave. The thing is that we have been working now in the North Cliff and we have a better opportunity now to go there. And we have had two intents to do that. One in 2017 from Playa Sardinera, our current base camp, and another intent in 2018 from El Faro, from the lighthouse. Basically, um, the team from 2017 was Pat, Rick, Tom, and Manuel. Uh, from, Sardine from the Sardinera camp, they did the whole four mile trail of Los Caobos Trail that goes until they're the, north the Northwest Cape, and they just kept walking and walking and walking to try to reach Cliffe. That in that time, and also in, in 2018, we had a lead for, of where the cave could be. And if you see there, it's just in the center of the North Cliff. Um, the group walk all that distance and you can see there, there's a pad in the cliff. And the thing about the Mona Cliff, specifically, specifically in the north, is that at some point you can be just there in the cliff. And at some point you are 150 feet apart from the cliff. Then you have to go back 40 feet to the clay, to, I mean to the cliff. And the thing is that you never go in a straight line. After Goa Espina, it gets very hard for you to go in a straight line. And after the Northwest Cape, there is no trail. So it's more complicated. Basically, at some point, they were walking at noon and more than noon in the Mona Plateau. And definitely, the temperatures are not going to be your ally. So they decided, hey, we cannot continue walking. And at some point, they decided to go back to the camp. Um, then, in 2018, we, in the Isla de Mona project, we thought that maybe from a photo from the lighthouse, uh, there was a better chance to reach the North Cliff and try to get to Rifle. Uh, I, there in the map, you can see El Campo, uh, the, the campsite for El Faro and the one for Sardinera. I have those two there for you to compare that basically we did the same thing from the corners of the island. We tried to go to the north uh, cliff of Mona. And in that uh, 2018 uh, exploration, um, four of us went from Sardinera to El Faro and that camp was established in conjunction with the Department of Natural Resources and the Mona Rangers, since that is not an official camping site for anyone. They were definitely of great help. Um, that year, Manuel and Tom were again in the exploration team, and Anthony Castro and myself, we were the new addition. That's basically our camp there. And we all thought that from El Faro, and um, if we could start walking way earlier than the previous uh, group, that we could have a better chance to reach Cliffe. Uh, I mean, sorry, to reach uh, uh, to reach Rifle. We we didn't get to the cave. Um, basically, there is no trail since the beginning. That is something that differs a little bit from the year from the exploration of 2017, because from El Faro there's no trail. To the North Cliff. Basically, we started walking in the edge uh, of, of the the uh, east edge of the cliff in Mona, and we just kept advancing and advancing and advancing. We did more than four miles, which is definitely uh, very very good, um, but it was complicated. It was very complicated to advance because, like I have been saying, you're not going in the straight line all over the cliff, and and particularly here in the in the east side of the of the cliff of Mona, sometimes when you were trying to advance, you could see the bushes that they went from the cliff all the way into the island, and you really didn't know where you can how you could pass them. And sometimes those bushes are full of poison ivy, and you really don't know how to move forward, even though. Um, even though that we passed the colony of the boobies, the, the, there in the left is a photo of the boobies. And when you are heading there in a north cliff and you pass by the colony of the boobies, you definitely know you're doing something well. And well, hey, you're walking in the, of the, in the edge of the cliff. It's at some point, you're going to pass by that. Um, but it was not enough. It was not enough. Um, at some point, um, probably the temperatures and the physical condition played a role in some of the crew of, of, of that year's expedition. 
and if that happens when you have been walking for more than five hours and it's getting to be noon and more than noon you really have to implement safety because we all have to get back to the camp and we all want to do it in a, in a good condition. So basically we decided, hey, we had to stop and we have to start walking back uh, to, the, to, the, to the camp in the, in the lighthouse. But there are a couple of good things about that uh, 2018 Northcliff exploration. First of all, we did find some caves we find a couple of caves that at that, moment were, at that moment were not in our records. So we have another two caves. We have another two reasons to get back to the North Cliff and, and to explore not only Rifle and, two, and, those, and those two caves, but the other many caves that are there. And something that happened while we were camping there in, in the lighthouse that year is that the next day, after not being able to reach um, uh, Rifle, a couple of us, Manuel and I, we did a trail recognition expedition of a trail that Proyecto de Mona was recommended back in 2017 that it could be a possibility for us to go to the North Cliff. Um, they told us about this trail that is um, used by hunters in the hunting season that goes from the southwest of the island all the way to the north crossing the center of Isla de Mona and well we decided that we wanted to do the first half of that trail to see the conditions of that of, of that trail the thing is that sometimes uh, you see uh, a trail in a map of Mona or someone tells you go into that trail but when you actually get there the trail does not exist uh, uh, maybe sometimes you walk and it ends nowhere basically because some of those trails are closed so we decided to see in what condition was this trail and we did the first half uh, we wanted to see how fast we could do it so and we reached the center of the middle point of that trail and there's a photo in the bottom that's the Bajura del Centro and when we got there we we saw we immediately saw a place that it may be a good place to camp in the future to establish a base camp from which we can then do the other half of the trail to try to reach the, the North Cliff. Something very positive uh, about this trail is that it is only from the beginning in the southeast all the way to the north is just 2.2 miles and I have been telling you here that we have tried two times to get to the to get to Rifle and the North Cliff by doing more than four miles and this trail the entire trail will be only two miles that's something of course very very positive and also uh, worth mentioning right now is that the second part of that trail we didn't do that part uh, that that moment but the second part of that trail is called the colony of the boobies which means you're going to end because in fact that trail ends very near the colony of the boobies and like I told you before we passed by the colony of the boobies when, while we were uh, exploring the North Cliff trying to reach Cliff and trying to, to reach Cueva Rifle and the thing is that this uh, trail puts you way ahead of that so probably that trail is just another good chance another good opportunity to go there also we have a GPS point uh, of Cueva Rifle that was provided by archaeologist Alice Sampson and um, maybe all those new ingredients um, can maybe help us to reach the North Cliff not only for Cueva Rifle for those couple of new caves but to all the caves that are there that we are that we do not know about their existence uh, in Proyecto de Mona in Proyecto de Mona we all are aware of this trail recognition tree that we did also the rangers know about the about what we did and it's still something that needs a lot of detailed planification we definitely need the, the the help of the mona rangers because if that happens well that's not a, a official campsite uh, and it's something that we wanted to do this year but since the situation that we are all living on and uh, living in and we all know well, we decided that this was not the year to go to Mona, but we can go. We can wait to go back to implement that and to keep working in all the other places that we have been doing. Also, very important for that campsite is that if we go caving from there, we can also 
map and explore some caves that are there in the center of the island. So there are many positive things about that. It's just another way, just an opportunity. And basically we just have to go there to do that and we, we hope to be there soon uh, to, to keep uh, pushing the North Cliff and many other caves in Mona. I really hope you have enjoyed this presentation. Uh, thank you for being with us all this time. And if you have any question about this presentation, I am an NSS member, so you can go there and look me up. And maybe we can have a, a small chat about, about this presentation. So thank you very much uh, for being here with us this time. And see you in Mona. <laughs> gracias. Muchas gracias. Bye. Thank you.